So this is the onboard charger removed from the vehicle. Uh, it is mounted on with four bolts, actually two bolts and two nuts. So there's two studs at the bottom that come through here and a nut goes on it and here as well. On the top, there are two bolts that go down into here and here and that's what holds it onto the car. There's one plug on this side here. What you have to do is pull this red tab back, then you depress this orange tab and the connector will pull off halfway. Then you depress this black tab and then it will pull off the rest of the way. This one here is quite tricky to get off. Space is quite limited. On this side here, just a normal, normal plug, very simple. Uh, it just has a little tab on the other side of the connector that you depress and pull it away. That one's easy. This one's the same as the other side. There's no safety tab on this one here, but again, you depress this part, put it halfway off, then depress the red part, and then pull it the rest of the way off. And then this cable here goes down the side trim all the way to the back. And this one here has a kind of ECU style plug, which is on the other half that stays inside the vehicle. And that's how you remove that. On these coolant pipes down here, uh, the, there's a there's a depressed a button to depress on either side. You don't press both of them. You just press one of them in as as far as it will go, and then grab the pipe and pull it, and they'll both come off no problem. They're actually very easy to remove, um, and I show how to drain the coolant later on in the video. That's just a quick overview, and uh, a brief disclaimer as well. These systems are high voltage. You you could kill yourself if you don't know what you're doing. So if you don't know what you're doing, um, please take it to a professional. This video is only intended for information purposes, so any garages that are doing this job and they just want to get a brief overview of what's involved, this is more for them than it is for the DIYer. Not to say that DIYers can't do work on electric vehicles, um, but just bear in mind there are huge, huge safety precautions that need to be taken. And I didn't go through in this video the absence of voltage check. I just overviewed how to disable the battery. So you always have to do an absence of voltage check to make sure that everything's safe to work on. But without further ado, I'll show you how to dismantle everything and get the onboard charger out of a Volvo V60 hybrid. little screwdriver to unlock and lock that and then you just pull that forward screwdriver in there and flick that up need class zero PPE for this There we 
go. And then lift that out. So it can just help to depress that black part in there when you're pulling it all the way off of that. There's a little clip in there. See that bit there moving up and down? It's in the black bit. And then that clips over that little orange uh, ridge there in the middle on the plug to the high voltage battery. I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of how that high voltage connector comes off. It's a bit tricky, very difficult to get your hands down there. Obviously with the PPE, um, it makes it difficult to get down there without damaging your gloves. And if you've got gauntlets on to protect your gloves, it'd be even more difficult. But anyway, got that out in the end. So same same principle with this. Um, you have to depress this one here at the back first and then pull it out part of the way and then it has a secondary lock here in the middle that red part you have to push that down to pull the connector the rest of the way off this one here is a little bit tricky because it goes on upside down like that and it goes down there so that's how that one there comes out and now this is almost completely connect disconnected um all we need to do now is unbolt it and then i think we have to remove this cable here and that's it. No, you can't go in there. No, no claws. Hello. I know. You flirt. So there's the two studs at the bottom. If you drop one of those, don't worry, you can get it back pretty easily. So you just have to pull the bottom of it out and then you can lift it up and then we can set that aside here for now and then obviously we have to disconnect these coolant pipes. I'm not sure but I'm pretty, I'm kind of hoping that if I remove this trim here I can I can pull these pipes all the way outside the car and drain the coolant out there which would be a lot easier and probably a lot less mess. I mean obviously you wouldn't disconnect them inside the car, you have to drain them from the, somewhere else in the cooling system. So to get this out of the way, which goes over that there, you just have to loosen, but not remove, the two 8 mils either side, and then it just lifts off up. It's got these little spreader clips that go inside there, so you just pull directly upwards. That's that done. Got one bolt here. them. One more bolt in here. There we go. So just remove this little backing plate cover here so we can get in here to our coolant and then again just another 8 mil in here to remove. And then once you pull it forward a little bit, a 10 mil bolt just behind that fixing point. Another eight mil just down here. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta admit when you did something stupid, you don't have to remove that 10 mil. 
that was completely pointless. You just hook out the top of this like that. There's a little notch in it, even for a little screwdriver. You just hook that out and then it pops right up. So <laughs> that's a lot easier. It's a bit of a mission, but with one hand it is anyway. But there we go. Got that plastic trim out. Now hopefully we should just be able to should just be able to bring those coolant lines up here and around. So don't forget to unplug that sensor there. We have to separate these two lines here, like so. That one there's nice and free now, which is good. But that all just kind of fell off. Uh, there's a trim up here, that literally just pulls down. There's one eight mil over there goes through this bit of trim and then this whole thing just literally just lifts off very very easy you just have to double check on the this part here of the airbag pillar there's a clip in the back so you might just need to separate that with your hand then that just pulls out nice and easy so you can pull this all the way forward like that and now this cable here we want to unplug from down here and it has just like a normal ecu plug so you pull out this yellow tab and then it disconnects the connector. So we'll attempt to drain the cooling system by pulling this off. And then once that's the lowest point in the system, hopefully it should just drain out pretty much all of the coolant, or at least enough just to get this disconnected without making a horrific mess. So to disconnect this coolant hoses, which I've put up here out of the way, you just depress the tab as hard as you can and then pull it away and then obviously once you get this out here there will still be some coolant in it so you want to make sure that you drain whatever coolant is left in it in the pipes into a container um, and try and do it without getting a mess everywhere I spilled a tiny tiny little bit you can see here virtually nothing but very importantly do not forget to disconnect this both batteries are disconnected, high voltage batteries disabled, 12 volt batteries disabled. If you lock the boot, you won't be able to open it. Same with all the other doors. So give yourself a way back in. 